All right, so as we're wrapping up the wings here, getting ready to uh, rivet the, the bottom skins on, I've got everything done on the inside of the wings. I'm going to tighten up the wires a little bit. This skin has been um, fully cleaned up and dimpled. This one, obviously, not yet. There's a little bit of overlapping against the leading edge in the fuel tank. That's where I made these marks. So I'm going to just have to file those down a bit, and then I'll work on this skin. But the local EAA technical advisor is coming over this afternoon. Um, for no particular reason, just wanted a second set of eyes on the inside of the wings, check my linkages, check everything, just make sure he's happy with my wiring and everything before we button this guy up because that's just hard to fix later. So the last thing I need to do before he comes over later is get the um, aileron trim servo mounted. So basically... The trim servo mounts to the access plate. I've mounted the access plate to the wing. You mark a center line. I don't know if you can see it or not. Eh, you can kind of see it there. You mark a center line of the control horn. And then these guys get installed six inches to either direction of the center line. So basically something like that like this goes this goes on there and then the spring oop, ah, the spring will stretch out and connect so then this can travel in either direction and i just realized it's a good thing i'm doing this now i just realized i marked it without the aileron in the center position which would have been absolutely terrible so now i'm going to redo that Put the aileron in its neutral position and then remark my push rod before I drill holes for those. So cool. See? Take your time. It's so easy to make mistakes. It is so easy to make mistakes. I'm so glad I caught that. Uh, I'll update you later. Okay, well, first rivet of the morning. This is my biggest fear with these big skins is if you make a mistake, how do you fix it? So somehow my bucking bar must have slipped off my rivet and I pounded into my bucking bar. And it's, it's through the skin. So... I'm going to, well, I'm going to double check, but I think it's all the way through. So I'm going to have to drill that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that hole to stop it, dimple it. I'll have to use a pool, the pool rivet dimpler, and then put a rivet through the hole. It's not a big deal. It's just, you know, we all strive for perfection and perfection is unattainable. It's in a spot where no one will notice it, but man, that makes me angry. All right, I'll show you the fix. Okay, I drilled it um, a number 40 seems to have gotten the entire crack. Now, obviously it's not perfect, but when I dimple it, it'll smooth out that area, but I don't see, I'm gonna, deburr the hole now but I don't see any more of the crack so I stopped the crack and then um, I'm going to dimple the hole and then uh, put a rivet in there well like everything it is fixable um, I mean while we're here I might as well just show you 
I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not in love with what's happening on this bottom skin. I'm not polishing the airplane. I'm going to paint it. So some of these surface scratches, I don't care about. I need to put some new tape on my, um, I can see the tape has worn off on there, but, um, so all I did was exactly what I said. I drilled it out. I thought I was going to have to drill to a number 30 hole. I didn't. I was able to use a number 40 hole. And then um, I used these guys, the tight rivets, where you, if you've never seen these before, you basically, here's the female side. And then that goes through the skin. Here's the male side. You You slip it on, and then you use your pull rivet tool and it gave me a little bit of a dimple um and then I was able to get a um an oops rivet with a wider shank and a smaller head um in through that hole and I mean it's it's pretty good I'm pretty happy with it um I mean my god when you zoom in on a camera you could really <laughs> you could really see imperfections that you can't see with the human eye but I think we're good there. Um, I think we're good. I feel good about it. It's got a nice clean uh, rivet on the other side. And we're gonna move on. It was about a 10 minute fix, but uh, you know, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. It's just gonna happen. So uh, I'm gonna get better at these skins, these underneath skins. We learned a lot doing this panel, and I'm learning a lot now. I double check the rivets, like I put my bucking bar and I push the rivet out to make sure I'm on the right rivet, but it is just so, I cannot explain how disorienting it is when you're reaching through with one arm and you've got your other arm and you legitimately are certain you're in a spot that you're not. It's just very disorienting, it's very challenging. This has, undoubtedly been my least favorite part of the build so far and I'm telling you it's taking me like an hour to do like two or three half rows I mean I probably have six hours into this skin and I thought this morning was going to be like the easiest part I have full access all I have to do is the bottom and I was really like man this is going to come out easy and then the first hole I did and that's the problem I came out I felt good about where I was at, and there you go. All right, so with the repair done, I was able to finish this first. This is the left inboard skin. Uh, all I have to do now is just squeeze these rivets with the nut plates on the back. Some of them have nut plates, some of them don't. These are machine countersunk, so I'll do that here in a second. Um, but again, um, Considering how difficult this was, I'm very happy with it. I got better as I went. This top row is not great, and then some of these first rivets are not great. As I started working my way down, I got better. I don't think there's any major deformation. There's no major oil canning. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy with it. It was very, very difficult. I mean, again, I'd be much happier if I didn't make this mistake, but it looks good. Enough about that. So the big thing I would say here is um, the instructions tell you to Clico the top row and down to the J channel. And then when you're trying to rivet this, it is impossible. So we were not able to do that. We were able to Clico the top roll and like two rivets down and then we were able to fold the skin a little more and get up in there. Um, I don't have any pictures of that, but I'll take a picture maybe on the next time. Um, some things I would say, you know, just go slow, use your different bucking bars. I use this bar to get the J channel rivets because I was able to get in from underneath and go above the J channel and then come at it like this. So this worked really well for above the J channel. Um, you do, I used kind of this piece to get those first rivets that were under the J channel because I could get under it and get up against it. Um, 
and then I used my tungsten, my tungsten um, bucking bar for most of it. So, you know, just go slow, get creative, get some pillows on the ground. Um, and I think the other side, this skin on the other side will go substantially faster. And then I'll do the outboard skin and the outboard skin. So um, I couldn't be happier with the edge. It is a perfectly smooth edge. Um, a few thousandths of an inch of paint will smooth any of that out. But that's it. First bottom skin done. Hey everybody, so when uh, the FAA wants to know if it's me who's doing the building, you could see, look, hi, it's me. Anyways, um, I wanna document this for both you and for me, so I remember how to do it on the other side, so I could maybe save you some time, and so I go down when I'm in a mental institution for this piece driving me crazy, we have some sane documentation of it. Uh, I really struggled with this piece, um, so I don't even want to get into kind of the method I used here because the method I use here will translate to this, and I think this method is great. So the instructions have you start with this rivet right here. If I back out, you'll just look at your band's RV10 instructions. And then what I did is I click out every other one, and then I just... I was only able to do like two or three at a time and then I would pull the Clico in to fill in the two or three gaps. But I basically went like two this way, two this way, two this way, two this way, or like four or whatever. But I didn't do a lot until I got the top row done. Then the instructions tell you on this side, the, uh, the, the tip side of the wing, the instructions tell you to stop here because this piece, you're gonna fold this back to get to this rib, which is awesome because I was trying to figure out how we were gonna do this because this rib is pointed that way, which means you can't get to it from here. So I thought I was gonna have to stick my arm in through here, but no, let me back up a little bit. You fold this back and get into it like this. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. What I'm doing right now, which is working really well, again, the, some of you are going to look at these reflections and say, my riveting is terrible. Oh my God, it sucks. It's so bad. Something about these reflections makes the riveting look really bad. I, I could not be happier with the riveting. I mean, it is, it is good. Um, but basically, once you have the top row done all the way to here, then what I did is I did three rivets down in each row. So I did like three down, three down, three down, and I kept going back and forth, and then I did the same thing here, three down, three down, not doing anything on the one, two, third row. And I'm gonna keep doing three at a time until I get to about here, one up from here. I'm gonna slip the J channel in, and then at that point, you're pretty much good to go at that point. I'll, f I'll give you an update when I'm done, but something I need to remember is once I get to about the J channel, I have to get the, um, the pedo mast in there. Otherwise I won't be able to bend this up enough to get it in. Um, but that's about it. So, you know, it's just a lot of kind of reaching up, oop, reaching, kind of getting down on my knees here, um, reaching up with one arm, riveting with the other. And you're going to have to practice your left arm and right arm riveting because there's sometimes you're holding the bucking bar with your right arm and riveting with your left. There's sometimes you're holding the bucking bar with your left arm and riveting with your right. But so far, an assistant would help. If I had an assistant, if my wife uh, would put her headphones on and come help me, then she could start slipping rivets into these and moving Clicos while I'm down here, but she's not. So I just kind of put a rivet in, drop all my tools, pull out a Clico, put another rivet in. It sucks, but that's it for now. Okay, so the first bottom skin is done. Every rivet in place. This was just as challenging and difficult and frustrating as you would expect it to be, but it's done. It's possible. You can do it alone. 
I did every single rivet on here, except for like the first five or 10. When we were trying to figure it out, I had a friend over. But then when he left, I didn't need it. I, you can do every single one of these rivets alone. You're gonna want help. <laughs> if you have someone there to hand you tools, you don't have to stand up as much. But as you can see in the video, I'm showing you here when you reach around, you can do it alone. Now for my memory banks, in case I build another one of these, and for your uh, help, <clears throat> Everything was fine until I got here. Now, like I said in the previous video, you fold this back to get to here. Easy, easy, no problem at all. Then I made a mistake. I was enjoying the bottom rivets because they were so easy to do because I have this big opening right here. My plan was to kind of do like one, 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 sorry like that, so I could keep getting to it. But I was getting bored with that, so I did like three at a time, and then like three at a time, and then I did like three, but then instead of going back up here, I did three more, and then I started to get myself into a sticky situation. These top rivets are tough to do. So my suggestion is get this row done, super easy, then kind of work your way this way, while you can still fold this guy back, then this and this is easy because the holes are so big versus this tiny little hole right here. Plus I put a tube in it, which makes it even smaller. Then you kind of do the same thing. Then you kind of do this row and then top row, middle row, bottom row is the easiest. This row is like these couple of rivets right here because they're on the inside. Like it's really hard to hold the bucking bar, uh, but you can do it. I did it. A lot of people online said, grab yourself some uh, pull rivets because there's spots that you can't get to and you're going to want pull rivets. And you know what? Um, I just saw, shoot. You can see it didn't poke through the skin at all, but man, everything looks worse on camera, but it is a little dent. The paint will hide that. Uh, you know, if, you've, if you wanna buy yourself some, some pull rivets, um, some fours and maybe some fives, um, there are some spots like, like right here, that rivet took me about 20 minutes to figure out how to do. These couple took me about 10, 15 minutes each. So yeah, if you don't mind having a pull rivet right there, right there, right there, right there. Yeah, yeah. These are hard to get to. Um, but that's it. Bottom skin's done. Uh, next is this side. So we'll start working on that. This won't be nearly as hard, but it's daunting because in my head, I feel like I've accomplished something. And now I have to go back and do it again. All right, going to clean up the shop, spend the weekend with my kid, and we'll get back at it next week. Bye-bye. Well, the deed is done. This is the right wing, the left wing. So I learned a little bit. I have to look back at my log book, but I think I had about 40 hours on the other side. And I think I had probably half of that on this side. Um, couple of dents, little, not dents, but, but yeah, a little, little scuffle there. Couple scuffles here. I don't know what happened. I must not have been on the rivet. Um, and then one little scuffle here, um, you know, not my favorite. I'm not proud of them, but it is what it is. But I will say um, I had more than 40 hours. That I, 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 don't, I don't know. Maybe 50 on that side, 20, whatever. I did it in about half the time on this side. Um, but one of the big helps was this sort of last part. Again, this part isn't all that hard. It's just awkward. This part, this last two full bays gets hard. You think it's easy because you pull this back, but 
what I learned from last time was work away from here. Um, you can get to these rivets later through here. So you want to do a few of them. But basically, I want to do most of this top row. Then come... No, what did we do? We did this part. Yep, yeah, this row. Then as much of the top row as we can. Then come back to this because you could kind of reach in like that. Leave the bottom row until the end. Um, then do this top row, then work down, then work across, then work down, and then do the whole bottom row. That will be much easier, leaving this row for last. So hope that helps. I'm gonna put the rigging back in, connect the electrical for the trim, and then do the wing tips. And then these wings are done and ready for storage. The fuse will be here in a couple weeks. All right, guys, uh, I'll see you when the wing tips are done or part of the wing tips.